Welcome back. In the last video that I did with storyboards, we started out with a um, tab controller, tab bar controller template of a storyboard application um, for the iPhone and Mono Develop. And I'm going to just run this real quick to show you what we kind of um, left off with at the, in the last video was basically we have a tab bar controller with three views controllers that we're connected to. And you can see first, second, and third. We made the third view controller. Um, we had to inherit from the class that we made and we put a label on it and we can see here the labels being displayed. Now in the last video, I realized I had a typo and I spelled hello wrong. Um, uh, thanks for somebody for emailing me on that. I have fixed that in this demo. So if you're watching really close, you would have saw I added extra W by accident. Uh, I'm gonna quit the simulator. And so for this video, what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a navigation controller into this without writing any code. Um, I'd like to have three pages um, that we can kind of link the navigation controller to and we'll build buttons like the blue bar at the top of the iPhone. And you'll be able to click those buttons to switch between those three pages. So to start out with, I know I'm going to make three pages for my navigation controller. So I need to make three more view controller classes. So I'm gonna go into my code here in Mono Develop, um, and I'm gonna go to File New and File, and I'm gonna make three more um, iPhone view controllers. So I'm just gonna kinda go here and say um, page one view controller, and we're just gonna call these page one, two, and three. I'm gonna say um, new, and once again, we have zip files, we'll fix that after. Um, I really wish they had a button here that said create zip file um, so that you'd have an option to uncheck that and it wouldn't make those and maybe um, the dudes that are making this will um, watch it and take that as a suggestion um, because we don't need them, the zip files, all the time anymore. So I've got a page two view controller, click new, and we need one more, page three. New, file, new, file, we will make a third iPhone view controller called page three view controller click new. Now I'm going to use the command key on my keyboard, which is the key closest to the space bar, so I can multi-select. And I'm going to select um, the three zip files that this thing made. I'm going to right click and say remove. And it's going to come up that scary, uh, you know, scary screen that says, hey, are you sure you want to do this? I am sure. I'm going to click the delete button and get rid of those. Now the other thing to remember um, that we talked about last time is that um, the constructors because signature is wrong on these files. You know, this is pointing to the zip file um, that we just had out there and we don't want the zip file. We want to use the storyboard. So how we do that is we basically make in the um, signature of the constructor, we make a link to an integer pointer. We're going to call it handle. Um, and then the base, we're just going to call handle. Um, to hand that off to our view controller. And what this does is it tells it to find the um, integer pointer to the number of the view inside of the storyboard file. Does that make sense? Um, I'm gonna go into the other two guys here and I'm gonna do the same thing on page view controller two. So int pointer handle, and I'm gonna kind of go over here, delete this stuff in here and just do handle as a reference. Um, now you're probably asking, well, geez, he looks like he's doing that really quick. How is he doing that? Um, is there a, a trick that he's doing um, to delete like the text real quick? Like if I do this, it just all go on. Um, Mono Develop has the VI shortcuts, the Vim, and that used to be a text editor from the old Unix days. Those keyboard shortcuts are built into Mono Develop, and you have to enable them in the options. And when you do that, if you know VI, you could do commands. And I'm a, I came from the um, programming in the really old, old days in C and C++ on Unix and Solaris. So I've got a lot of background in using VI, and I, honestly, in Xcode and uh, Visual Studio, I have um, plugins that allow me to use VI keyboard shortcuts and I realize that sounds kind of nerdy but um, I just can't get away from them. So we got page one, two, and three view controllers now set up in our um, our project here and we're ready to go back to the um, Xcode interface builder GUI and start adding in our views into these, our view controller um, GUIs, and then linking them into our classes and getting this all set up so they can talk to each other between the UI components of Xcode and our C Sharp code. So how we do that, so we're gonna double click on our main storyboard file again. You can see down here, status bar, it's updating Xcode, and that's kind of cool. Now, 
like I said before, when you come in here with storyboards, the one thing I can say is that you don't get a lot of screen real estate. So I highly recommend going up to the view and turning off stuff that you don't need until you'll need it. Um, so I'm going to turn off and you really want to kind of get used to this. There are keyboard shortcuts to do this. I do not remember what they are. I, I can't remember if they're control one. Um, no, that's definitely not it. Um, there are keyboard shortcuts. So if you go into the Xcode's help, you can find those to turn these on and off. I'm a mouse guy, so I am... Uh, from Xcode standpoint, I'm using just the mouse button options. So you can see here we have our tab bar controller and we've got our first, second, and third views that we did from the last video. I'm gonna kind of drag these up because I don't need these in the presence view. I wanna build my navigation guys down here. So let me zoom in here and we got some free real estate that we can use to drag our view controllers out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by dragging out a view controller. And some people watching the videos that have some background in how all this works may complain and say, well, geez, Aaron, there's, there's other ways of doing that. There is. I'm going to do it this way because prior to Xcode 4, I came from the, um, I used Xcode starting in version 2. So I'm used to doing things a little bit different when Interface Builder was a separate program. And I started programming before the iPhone came out with the Mac, um, just using regular Cocoa. So I'm used to kind of doing things a certain way. I'm not saying that there isn't other ways to do it, but this is the way that I know how to do it and I'm comfortable doing it. So if somebody shows you a different way of doing it and that works too, that's great. But I'm going to do it this way. And how I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a view controller out and now you can see here I got the view controller but it's not connected to anything and right now he is just of type view controller so the first thing I want to do is I want to change his class to be of type page one view controller so this controller will link to our code in mono developer C sharp classes that we just made so I'm going to do that and now you can see down here this is now page one view controller now before I add page two and three in I want to do something um, important I need a navigation controller that actually brings the bars out, the blue bar at the top, that allows me to switch between these three different page view controllers. Kind of like the tab bar controller does with the bar at the bottom, the navigation controller is going to do it with a bar on the top. Now, this is where I was saying there's multiple ways of doing this. You can see there's an object over here to do this. I don't like doing it that way. I like doing it like this. I'm going to select the page one view controller. And it's really critical that you have this guy selected. If you select one of these other guys by accident, random chaos could happen to you. So make sure you have the page one view controller selected. Go into editor, embed in, and select navigation controller. And when we do this, it's going to automatically build us a navigation controller. And it also builds us a link from the navigation controller into the page one view controller. I like this better because it saves steps. I don't have to drag and build the relationship. It's building the relationship for me for free. And I'm a lazy guy like most programmers are. So because of that, I now have got that relationship. You can see these little lines um, dragging between the navigation controller and its first page view for free. What I need to do now is I want to add in two more view controllers um, for page two and page three. So I'm going to zoom out so I can have more screen real estate and I'm going to drag these guys into view so I have two more of them. So I know that looks kind of blurry. Um, I apologize. I'm going to kind of scroll over here. So zoom in so it um, doesn't look so bad. Um, looks like I'm going to zoom out a little bit more so we can kind of see these guys. And what I want to do first is change their classes. So I'm going to change the first guy here to be page two because we already have page one done and I'm going to change this guy to be page three okay now we're done let me go back and show you some things that happened with page one when we did that embedded what happened was you notice that the blue navigation bar came to the top that's because it is linked to the navigation controller any view that's linked to the navigation controller automatically gets that blue bar for free um so you'll notice that page two and page three do not have the blue bar. They don't have the blue bar because they're not connected yet. Once we connect them, they will get the blue bar. So how do we do that? Because it probably should be the next logical thing to do is to connect these three guys together. Well, we're going to search for in our little um, utilities toolbox down here of controls. We need to search for bar, um, bar, button. Um, item and you can see there it is this guy is a bar button item what he allows you to do is um, when you drag him onto a navigation bar he makes one of the little bars now I wanted to show this as a demo to explain to you 
what's going on here? I'm, I'm dragging it out, but it doesn't look like the little green plus sign's coming out, so I can't drag them anywhere. It's not working. The reason why it's not working is because you have to be zoomed all the way in to the view in order to drag it. And I didn't know that at first. And I was like, what's going on here? And it took me a little while and I was getting frustrated. And I just learned that, hey, you have to be zoomed in in order to drag the bar button onto the navigation. And this works with labels with any control. So that's a little tip for you. Make sure you're zoomed in. Otherwise, you're not going to get the green plus and you cannot drag um, controls onto your views. So I dragged the bar button item onto the navigation um, bar. And what I want to do here is I want to rename this guy. And a lot of people like to do this in code. Like I've told you before, I like to do an X code. So I'm just going to double click on this guy. Um, and I'm going to call him page one. Or excuse me, page two. Because when you click on this guy, I want him to go to page two, the guy next to him. I also would like to know that I'm on page one with this particular controller. You can see here, this is page view controller one. So how I do that is I can label the top navigation bar. I can just double click on it and I can just name it page one. And if I click off it, then you can see that page one's here. And if I click this button, I'm gonna go to page two. Now, how do I get page one to go to page two? Well, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Um, in the past, we've always used our, our navigation, or excuse me, our view controllers, and we've always linked those together. So if you remember in the previous video, I would select the tab bar controller, I would hold on the control key, and I would drag to one of my views to link those together. We're not going to do that with the navigation uh, controller. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use the buttons to actually link between our page controllers. Because really what we want to happen is when somebody clicks the page 2 button, we want this page 2 view controller to call up its view. Does that make sense? I think so. And I think that if we get them finished doing this, you'll, once you see it, you'll, it'll kind of click for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the button here, and I need to click on it twice, it turns out. The first time if I click on it, it just kind of doesn't turn completely gray. If I click on it a second time, you'll see that it's highlighted. I now know I have this guy. You can see that the rest of the kind of the screen here has a little um, been dimmed um, or opaque. So what I'm going to do is now that I have them selected, I'm going to hold down the control key, and I'm going to drag, click drag over to our page two view controller, let go, and you can see here I have a selection of different things I could do. And what I want to do is I want to push. This is like the old days of doing it with code. We basically want to push from page one to page two. And the minute I do that, you'll notice that one, I get our little connection um, uh, arrow here, which is really, really cool. The second thing is I got the navigation bar for free up here. And that's how you know you're linked. When you get the navigation bar, you know that, hey, when I click this page two I, uh, button, it's going to automatically bring this guy up. Now, if we scroll over here, we're going to notice that we have page three, and we need to link to that guy. So let's drag another bar button item onto the page two um, view controller, and we're going to rename this guy to page three. Double click there, page three. We'll also change the title to be page two. The last thing we need to do is we need to connect page three's button over to the actual page three view controller. So I'm going to do that. Um, we're going to click there twice like I did before. Hold down the control key, click drag to page three view controller, let go and push again. And we get the navigation bar and our arrow. Now, let me scroll back to show you something um, different about this. We'll notice here that we have different icons. They mean different things. The navigation controller icon here means that we're just connected. But this right here means that we're actually pushing views, which, you know, in the programming terms, this is like a stack in um, data structure classes where basically we're pushing and we're popping. So when we push, we're basically saying, hey, bring this guy on. And when we leave, we pop it off the stack. And that's why we're using these terms push and pop. And that's what we're doing because realistically, the iPhone really only has one view in memory at any time. And then you kind of swap between those. It's kind of like the old days of sticky notes where you can make a little animation by drawing on each sticky note little stick figure and kind of move, uh, automatically then moving the sticky notes between each other and you can kind of get an animation. Same concept. I'm going to go back to the last page view controller and label the top header of it page three. So now I have my three 
pages, and if I zoom out, we should see that they are connected together. Navigation controller to page one, page one to page two, page two to page three, and we're doing this with buttons. Now you notice I don't have a button on the third page, and the reason why is there's nothing there. I don't have another screen to go to, so I don't need a button there. Now what I'd like to do is um, put some labels on these guys um, so that we can change them in code just to show that we have all this working. So oop, I accidentally added a view control. Let me delete that guy. I'm going to zoom back into page one here, and we're going to add a label. I'm going to just add a label here, and we'll kind of make this guy longer so he fits the whole screen. And then we're just, I'm going to copy him. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to just hold down uh, Command and hit C. That's the copy option on the Mac. I'm going to go over to page two. I'm going to paste, and you'll notice that instantaneously, um, I got a little graphic problem here. Undo, I guess. Um... Let's go ahead and try this again, but we'll just drag out instead. It looks like there, maybe because I'm recording, there's a, a glitch with the way cut and paste works um, with that. So we can just drag out, I guess, instead. Let's just kind of go in here, label three, kind of do it here. Now, if you're OCD and you're trying to figure out how do I get these labels so that they're all at the same um, place on the, on the view, there's a way to do that. Select on the page one, go into the ruler icon here, and you can see that I am 166 pixels down because that is the Y axis, where the X axis is across. So I wanted these all to be at the same depth down and across. So I'm going to select this guy. You'll see he's at 20, but 169. So I just changed it to 166. And I can do the same thing here with this guy. I just make him 166. And now they're at all the same um, distance from the top corner of this which is coordinate zero zero if we remember that from geometry so we're almost done here we've got a navigation controller and we've got page one going to page two going to page three now the problem is is if we compiled this to start out with it would not work um, we would not be able to see the navigation controllers because the tab controller is not connected to the page controllers you see there's no line that goes from tab controller over here to this navigation controller so we got to fix that the second thing is our labels are out there, but they're not connected to our code. So we got to fix that too. So let's bring up the editor guy option here, where we can see both our labels um, over here, our UI graphics, and we can see our code. So I'm going to actually um, disable this bar over here so that we can see more code and we can get more graphics on the screen at the same time. So with page one selected, I'm going to control, hold on the control key on my keyboard, drag the label into the code, and build an outlet. And I, like, once again, an outlet's nothing more than um, a pointer, basically to some graphics options, um, to a gra graphics object, excuse me, um, in our code. So I'm gonna go to page two here, and you can see that when I selected page U two in the UI here, I'm using a little scroll bar down here to switch between those, um, I switched my code to page two. So I'm gonna hold down, grab the label, Control select in here again, make a new pointer, label, call this label page two. Um, kind of use my little drag guy here to go to page three. And drag again, make one more pointer, label page three. We're kind of set here. So if I uh, go back now with our little plus signs and minus signs here, and if I get rid of the editor, we'll see that we now have um, that all set. The last thing we need to do is somehow connect the tab bar controller to the navigation controller so that um, we can actually see these guys. We need a button down here so that when we click on it, we can see these um, screens. So it turns out that is, once again, pretty easy. Um, if you think that it's gonna involve holding down the control key and dragging from the tab controller, you've got it right. Um, this isn't rocket science, folks. What we're gonna do is hold on the control key with the tab bar controller selected. You can see it's blue, so it's selected. Drag in the navigation controller, and we're gonna actually make a relationship of view controllers. Remember we did that from the uh, above example in the previous video where we were doing that. When I do that, you'll see that instantaneously the view controller got a black, uh, black bar at the bottom for the tab bar. It also got the item created for it, and if I zoom in, you'll see that it is named item. And if we go over to our views here that we've created, they now get the black bar too, for free. They all use the same button though, because we're going to use these buttons at the top for controlling which page we're on. We don't need the, them to have individual buttons on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on the item here and name this pages, because that's what we're doing. We're bringing up the pages option, and then we're going to use the navigation bar to switch between those. At the same time, I'm going to bring up the inspector option by clicking up here, and I'm going to go into the inspector and change the image of 
this guy so that he is of type um, first, which is just happens to be a circle in this example. So let me zoom out with the um, the inspector out to just kind of show you that you know your storyboard is in a good shape when all things are connected with an arrow. And you can see here we have, um, you can kind of drag these guys out, and I know this is um, kind of blurry for you to watch. Um, I apologize for that, but you can see that he, we have a tab controller. He's linked to the navigation controller. The navigation controller is linked um, to page one, page one to page two, page two to page three. And you can see our first, second, third from our previous video are up here. This is done at this point in time. Let's go ahead and click save and go into Xcode and quit, uh, click quit. And I know you don't have to do that, but I am retentive about that. We're going to go into our page one, two, and three. Um, did a view did load. Um, methods and we're going to add um, some code to change our labels that we threw out there so just we can prove that we can talk to those and code so I'm gonna go into page one view controller I'm just gonna say label Oop. label so now this is pretty interesting I don't have for some reason um, access to my um, labels that I created so this tells me there's something going on here so let's save this and kind of go and see if we can debug this and see what's going on I'm gonna go back and, and Double click on my storyboard again and take a look at our controls here. And I'm going to bring up the editor option. And we'll see here that for some reason it didn't save. Even though I typed those in, it didn't save. So that's where I was saying that important, it's important in Xcode to save. Um, I don't know if I just didn't save or what, but we can see here that um, I definitely do not have the pointer that I previously dragged over. So let's do that again real quick. I'm just going to go in here, call this label page one. Scroll over here to page two, click here, go to here, Oop. click to here, say label page two, and we'll go over to the last view here and make this page, label page three. And this sometimes, oh, you can see that this one actually did work though. Look at that, it's there, but the other two did not have it. Look at, we can see our object here, so that's odd. Um, I'm not sure what happened there. This sometimes happens from time to time between Xcode and MonoDevelop not talking to each other, and I'm not sure why it happens. Um, that's why I've been really um, religious about going to File and Save, um, to saving all my changes and making sure that I have my storyboard selected. I get on my editor um, and bring this, this, this guy up here, and then making sure I go to File and Save so that I know for a fact that my, my code changes are saving. So let's cut off Xcode and go back in now to Mono Develop, and we can see we're updating it. And let's see if we can now see those controls. Um, let's go to page two and say label, and there's our label now. So you can see it from our code complete that it automatically is there. I'm going to say the text property. I'm going to say hello page two. Add our semicolon. Go into page one here, and we're going to go into this guy here. Say label page one dot text equals hello page one. Oops, not 21, 1. We'll kind of close out of that and go to page 3 here. And we'll just say here also, um, label page 3 dot text equals hello page 3. Go ahead and click save here. Let's simulate it and see what happens. By theory, our program should be completely working and everything should go well. Now we could take a look here and it's saying, well, we got a debug problem. So it's saying an object is required to handle here. And what's happened is I've typed in handle with a capital H instead of a lowercase h. Did you see that? So this is once again, um, you know, you're going to have typos from time to time. And you have to hit the debugger, see, you know, what your typo is and fix that. Um, I'm human just like everybody else, it turns out. We got our iPhone emulator up. And if we go through here, we can see from our previous demo, we had our first three. We see we have our fourth page option now here. And if we take a look here, we have hello page one. Because we just did that code, we change our label. We can click the page two button. We can see hello page two. We can go back to page one here for free. We didn't write any code to do this. Or we can go to page two and click page three. And we're at page three. And we can go back to page two and then back to page one. So now we have both navigation through the tab controller and the navigation bar controller which is really the goal of this video i want to show you one more thing before i go and i know that the video is getting kind of long but i want to show you what happens when you add in more than five items onto the tab bar controller there's something kind of cool that happens with story bars which makes it even more worth it
I'm going to kind of scroll this down um, to get rid of our Solution Explorer over there. And I'm going to add in two more view controllers to our tab bar here at the top. Now, normally I'd make code files, and I always tell you to make code files and then link the code files to the view controllers. But for what I'm about to show you, I'm just going to leave these um, view controllers without code files pointing to them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my control key and drag from the tab bar controller up to these two new views that I created, and I'm going to link those in using the relationship of type view controllers. And I know I did that kind of fast. Um, but this is your video is getting kind of long and I just want to kind of show you what happens here. You can see here I've got these two items now um, onto the view item and item. I'm going to rename these five and six because we already have one through four done. Let's just say um, five. And we'll just go over here and say six. And we'll say six. And you can do this via code. I don't have a code file pointed to these, so that's not going to be possible. And I'm going to change their images so that we can just see these images also. So I've taken and added two more views to this. And you don't have to do this part if you don't want to. I know I'm going quick. I just want to kind of show what happens. So I'm going to say save, file, quit from Xcode. And I'm going to rerun the debugger now. What's going to happen is, is that since the tab bar controller to start out with, Apple only allows so many items down there. And what happens is with the music app, the iTunes app it used to be called, and the latest version of iOS they renamed it, you get a more button. And when you click the more button, you can see your other views. We got that for free. I added two more views on there, and the iPhone knew, the SDK said, hey, wait a minute, we're only allowed to have five buttons down here. We have six automatically make a more and automatically show the fifth and sixth view. And you see, we have navigation controls also for free. It automatically just threw that up there. I did not write any code. So you saw, all I did was bring out two view controllers, linked them together, and we got that for free. So this is just to show you even more of the power of storyboards and just how good they are. Um, I highly recommend researching these a little bit more and uh, playing around with them because I think that realistically, your programs are going to be better with them. Um, and that's what I have for you today with this video. So I want to thank everybody for watching. And uh, if you have any other recommendations or, hey, I'd like to see this, this, or this, um, go ahead and just throw it in the comments or send me a personal message, and I'll take a look at um, doing videos on those. Thanks for watching.